I am going to call the Board of Finance in order at 5.03 p.m. on August 5th, 2023. And, sorry, September 5th, 2023. <laughs> Post Labor Day. Um, and the first item on the agenda is the agenda. We, um, uh, we have Councilor Barlow and I here in the room, a third member of the board and Councilor McGee. So we have a quorum. Uh, I think we may be joined by Councilor Chang as well um, shortly, but let's get started. And I welcome a motion on the agenda. Um, we'll do that on the agenda. Second. Thank you. Any discussion of the agenda? Seeing none, we'll go to the vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Um, that brings us to the public forum, and I'm going to look at to Chief of Staff, Jordan Riddell, to advise if there's anyone, member of the public, that would like to speak to the board online. Sharon, um, I just enabled your microphone. You can press star six to unmute, but I'm not sure if you wanted to speak up on the forum or not. So I will maybe wait a second. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so um, first off, I couldn't get in. I couldn't get in through the normal link. It sent me through CCTV, and I didn't want to go that route. So I wasn't quite sure what was different, um, but I just wanted to alert you to that. So that's why I'm on the phone. Um, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, and I wanted to thank... Um, the counselors that have come forward with the agenda item that is offering, I think, $15,000 of council initiative funds um, for um, the community health center to study um, a facility that will deal with the parking um, that they uh, now, the parking crisis they now face with the elimination of uh, some of the parking around their um, neighborhood. Um, and so that leads me to my general comment, and this is to you, Mr. Mayor, um, and I say this in all sincerity. I truly respect and admire your housing agenda and uh, applaud you for the prioritization of this. And um, one thing I think, um, could be a little bit better is trying to figure out how to make those housing units more affordable. A lot that I have seen going up, certainly if it's large enough, they have to have 15 or 20 percent affordable units, um, inclusionary zoning, but um, a lot of the rest are just really priced so that working people can still hardly afford them. Um, so that's still a problem for us. But I wanted to ask you um, if you would dedicate some, some energy and time to look at how we balance the business community with the need for housing. I'm very worried that as we take parking away um, to create what some find are very good initiatives, I'm going to leave it that way, um, uh, I feel that um, we leave like the Great Streets Initiative, a lot of comments came from the ski rack and other businesses about how it would impact them. These are long-standing businesses that provide great value, and I would hate to lose them, or I'd hate to diminish um, their um, ability to thrive. And so with the Community Health Center, it's, it's a health facility, but it's a business also, and it's located in a section of the city mm -hmm. where people can walk and get to it. So if we don't balance the needs of business. I don't feel where we have someone dedicated looking at that balance um, carefully um, so that I feel that we are at risk of losing businesses or um, also at risk of not really encouraging businesses to come. Um, so I'm asking you to really listen to what I have to say. I say it out of respect for your agenda, but out of concern for what I feel is something we're creating a vulnerability that really concerns me. So thank you very much for listening. 
Uh, thank you, Sharon. Appreciate your uh, engagement and weighing in. And we um, uh, think later in the agenda, um, we will talk a little bit more about the apartment situation um, uh, related to your comment. So is there anyone else uh, online? So, OK, there's no one. Um, I'm not seeing anyone in the room interested in offering public comment to the Board of Finance, so I'm going to close the public forum. And we do now have a five-item consent agenda, and given um, an attempt to uh, focus, uh, give us time to have discussions on the more deliberative items. Um, and uh, I welcome a motion regarding the consent agenda. I be happy to move that we uh, adopt the consent agenda, agenda and take the actions indicated on civic clerk. Great, thank you, Councilman B. Second, seconded from Dr. Barlow. Any discussion of the consent agenda? Seeing none, we'll go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries unanimously. Um, and welcome, Councilor Jang. Um, um, hope you had a great, great trip. Looking forward to hearing more about it. Um, with that, we will go to the delivery agenda. The first item is uh, at 4.1, an update on the initial receipt and obligation of nationwide settlement opioid money. Uh, I'll just... Um, for any member of the public that's watching, we'll listen clarifying for board members. This does really two important things that um, uh, I want to call out and um, ask for the board and the council ultimately support for here. This I urge people to take a look at the memo from Catherine. Shad, our, our CAO, um, really details. So, so the two things this does basically is it, it will set up a, um, a really segregate the money that is starting to flow and is going to flow for uh, for the better part of 20 years um, to the city from these settlement, these opioid related settlement, national settlements. Um, it's going to segregate that money, ensure that kind of give us additional level of uh, assurance, kind of like we do with the TIP districts, to make sure this money is um, uh, dedicated and preserved for the specific uses uh, of addressing the, the overdose crisis, the drug crisis. And then secondly, the, what we're asking for support to commit um, Seventy-five thousand dollars of those funds. Well, first, you'll see in here that you know how we've committed a kind of summary of how we've committed this fund so far. Hopefully, that's not new information for any counselors. We talked about it a little bit during the budget process. It should we with this board action and the council's action next week, we would be committing an additional seventy-five thousand dollars of the two hundred twenty thousand opioid settlement funds we've received so far to the Vermonters for Criminal Justice Reform. Um, from my perspective, BCJR is a bright spot in a very dark landscape right now with respect to the overdose crisis that BCJR has succeeded in getting more than 100 Vermonters into treatment over the last uh, year since they were set up. Uh, counselors may recall we gave them some additional funding, additional funding from, I believe, ARPA funds um, uh, a year ago. We've also advocated very significantly at the state level succeeded in getting the legislature to allocate significant funds for BCJR. Um, inexplicably, shockingly, frankly, um, the um, Department of Health has been unwilling to um, admit any funds to BCJR at this point, um, to the point where 150000 was in the budget two years ago, only a small, I think 10% of that was ever spent, and they don't seem to be uh, making any further commitment out of that fund. So basically, until we get that corrected at the state level, I think um, uh, the city, um, from my perspective, the city's going to need to continue to be a lead funder to keep this program going. We are not the only ones that uh, 
really value this uh, effort. Um, there are numerous other funders, smaller funders that have received, that, that have supported uh, BCJR, including the University of Vermont Medical Center very significantly and the Ben and Jerry's Foundation. Um, and also you may recall some of the days today, very positive uh, uh, feature on the contingency management efforts that are being kind of pioneered at the BCJR right now. Again, it's, I, I have talked to Dr. Levine directly about this. I do not understand why, uh, despite the broad support this group has, um, the state is not funding them yet, uh, but would ask for the board and the council support in keeping this program going um, uh, at this time. So uh, with that, the um, floor is open for, other, for, for discussion of this item. Um, I, I just had a question. So we're we're creating basically a restricted fund that will be used uh, specifically to address the opioid crisis. Um, could be used for other drug-related crises like the methamphetamine crisis, or would it be nar narrowly used just to take care of these things? And secondly, um, I, I I support uh, the you know the um, commitment to BCJR, but would we be able to use that money operationally in the city or some of that, for instance, like with CARES and things? Um, appreciate the questions. Um, it is certainly my understanding, um, and what we have the city attorney's office follow up on this and confirm before the vote next week that uh, that we um, both have the authority from the settlement funds and the way we are setting up this restricted fund to that as a or other related certainly would be not going to not overly box ourselves in and be thinking of the drug crisis, which continues to evolve and change, which we need responses for clearly that and you know, the great many of the acting um, drug users in uh, with me right now are combining meth and uh, opioid use. They're often found together, that only is cut into them, and we need evolving treatment methods given, given that. So I, I, it's certainly my intent to be able to, uh, to, to spend it on that. Um, we are using a fair amount of them. So as you see in the memo, the, um, you know, with this commitment, we will be about two hundred twenty thousand dollars of committed funds um, of the funds we have received so far. One hundred sixty thousand of that would be for internal use for the opioid position. Um, uh, I think it is, um, and there's quite a bit more, and there's more coming. Um, so uh, I think it's an interesting question you're asking whether. Um, uh, Ultimately, you might want to think about this as a, a future source for BTG CARES in the current year budget. You know, I, I guess I, I take your point. I think it's an interesting point, one that I'd like to think further about. In the current year budget, we've you know, for years allocated funds for the city share of BTV CARES, and um, we have a sort of urgent need for uh, want BCGAR to continue to operate. But this is a one year commitment. This is not. Uh, indication necessarily. In fact, it's not my goal that this uh, would continue permanently, and that I think this should be part of you know, the state as the primary social service funder in Vermont. And the uh, legislature, you know, makes no sense to me that they're not getting state support. So um, I hope that there can be support for this request. And um, uh, before making further commitments, we'll give further thought to uh, the question to raise here on the carriage. Councilman so. McGee. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'd be happy to make the motion as recommended on Civic Clerk, and we we'll just ask for the floor back after a second. Thank you, Councilor McGee. Is there a second? Second, second by Councilor Barlow. Uh, go ahead, Councilor McGee. Thanks. Um, I, I'm glad that the city is stepping up where the the state is uh, dropping the ball here. I think um, you know we've seen a, lots of positive work happening at BCJR, and I'm I'm just glad that. Um, we're continuing to invest in that. Um, and I'm curious, and we don't have to talk about it more here, but would be interested in maybe getting a full council update on some of the areas where the city uh, would like to invest, depending on uh, how much uh, money we get from these other settlements. Um, 
in the future and uh, some of the things that we might be planning for as those funds uh, come into the city. Uh, thank you, Council McGee, for uh, the support on the BCJR investment. Um, as you'll see, like with this commitment, we will, I think we're doing a reasonably good job of like, well, I guess what I'm say is I, I think we're in a hot crisis with what's going on with trucks right now. I am heartbroken by the reversals of the gains that we made in 2018 and 2019. Um, and I am very concerned that this problem is out of control and continuing to grow and uh, should be treated as, as a crisis. Um, we've been, been trying to take that approach with these new resources as they come in and to get them deployed. And so with this commitment, essentially all the money and then a little more that we currently have in hand will be committed um, there is more coming soon, and I would like to come back to you soon um, uh, so that as soon as we have those funds, uh, you know, so that we can continue to deploy this money rapidly, I think there's urgency to do it. So it's a little bit, it has been a little bit, um, yeah, I, I think I, I, I would support us doing having that conversation um, soon. Uh, it has, you know, I, one thing that we have been trying to kind of calibrate our investments a little bit uh, to be high impact and be uh, um, investing in areas that are not being covered by state investments. The state, of course, has, uh, as counselors may remember, about 70% of the settlement funds are flowing to the state. Um, and that is now, um, it is adding up what the state has. And um, uh, we, um, so I think when we come back and talk about it further, I think we can sort of frame uh, what we're going to try to do in relation to that state funding. I would say, and I'll have more, you know, I don't, I don't want to go too far down the tangent here. We got a lot of other items, but the, um, I am concerned that the state money is not being treated with urgency and is not being, uh, not getting out there. And uh, uh, we would welcome more with counselors on that as well. Thank you. Um, okay. Any further discussion of this item? If not, we'll go to vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Uh, now, please tell me, uh, make sure we follow up on, yeah. uh, on that question raised by Council Barlow. Um, <clears throat> the next item is the Champlain Street Park renovations. Um, we uh, are ready to move forward with a uh, construction contract on this item and um, also on. Welcome, Cindy and Max. Uh, I think Max uh, is pointing to you to help kick us off and give, just give a short summary of what we think. Um, yeah, sure. I'd be happy to give a short summary. Um, so we actually sort of started outreach on this project prior to the pandemic uh, in 2019 holding a number of events in the park and uh, at some partner organizations for the community and have been sort of gathering feedback just on what people wanted to see happen in Champlain Street Park. Um, unfortunately, due to the pandemic and some uh, budgeting shifts, we unfortunately had to sort of uh, reprioritize things and weren't able to return to this project until 2020, 2021. And we kind of had to pick back up with our outreach, um, but uh, after a pretty comprehensive initial outreach process, uh, including some additional meetings, tabling in the park, uh, having a number of surveys put out, hiring translators to translate surveys and hear from some other communities from around the park. Um, we went into a period of design over the winter and came back uh, with some additional surveys and public meetings in the spring. And uh, essentially heard from our community that they wanted to see this park uh, remain kind of as an open green space in our city's downtown with a, a simple playground and mostly just get a lot of uh, TLC, uh, cleaning up a lot of the brush around it was a priority, replacement of the fence, uh, adding some lighting if we could, and to make the 
playground a bit bigger and uh, more expansive. Um, and I can do a, a quick share screen just to sort of, sort of share uh, the final design we sort of came through out of that outreach process and give a quick uh, run through. I just need somebody to enable uh, screen sharing here. Everyone's doing that. They will do it in a second. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, and just a quick review in case anybody doesn't know, Champlain Street Park is uh, this little piece of green space mid block here on South Champlain Street between King and Maple Streets, in case anybody's not aware. It's one of our few pocket parks in the city. Um, and so this brings us kind of to the concept we came up with uh, based on what we heard back from the community. Um, so we plan to put in a large concrete pad seating area with some picnic tables up here at the front of the park where it's most visible having a curving walkway that is concrete uh, to accessible surfacing, uh, pervious rubberized surfacing back here for the playground, uh, speckling in a couple benches there and bike racks as well as new signage. Um, if you've been by the park recently, you'll see we've actually replaced this fencing and uh, have been working with some neighbors to kind of try and keep the brush down as much as we can, which is a little bit tricky because we actually don't own most of the land surrounding the park. So. This area here, we kind of have to periodically ask and negotiate for that landowner to let us go in and clear out all of the brush to keep the sight lines kind of visible into the park. Um, and sort of moving on, I can kind of give you a little bit of um, some renderings we came up with a while back that kind of show what we're picturing as the sort of the long-term vision here. So this is kind of looking from the street into the park, what that walkway would look like, uh, adding some landscaping on either side. Uh, ignore the playground here. We'll get to some actual options that have been presented to us by the vendor we're hoping to work with. And that would just be looking from the playground kind of back into the park, leaving sort of an open green space here for people to kind of use for those informal uses and otherwise just kind of keeping things open, keeping that seating area right up at the front to create sort of a more welcoming entrance to this uh, pocket park. There's just sort of an aerial view of that uh, same image. Um, so this is, uh, I'll go through these pretty quickly because we really need to discuss this a little bit more with uh, the vendor. It's gonna be a sort of a design build process for the playground, um, but these are two kind of options that have been presented to us out of our bid process. Um, so skipping into it here is sort of like a swing set. Uh, some basic play panels, uh, seating, and uh, one of the things we've asked for at this park in particular is a playground structure for ages two to five, knowing that uh, several daycare centers come here to use the park, uh, and that is the primary age group that is coming to use the playground. And I'll go through these pretty quickly. So this was the first option that was presented to us. And this is the second option, sort of the climbing structure, another sort of small playground structure. And again, having sort of an inclusive element with the swings here and uh, also prioritizing something we heard from the community, which is that they, they very much missed the swings that were removed from this park, um, I think about a decade ago. Um, and this is just to give a last brief overview of the outreach we did. Uh, this was everything uh, we sort of went through and um, we collected a total of 89 surveys through that process. And um, these are kind of like the counts of different things that we heard from the community that they wanted to see as well as some of the sort of open-ended feedback we got about generally just wanting to see this park uh, taken care of a bit more and improved. And so that I'm going to stop share and just jump back to our process, which was we put this project back out for bid finally in September and uh, received quite a few competitive bids for it and are looking to move forward with our lowest cost bidder who has um, also sort of given us the, the best playground options of uh, what's available. 
So uh, thank you for your time. And uh, if there's any questions, I'm happy to take those now. Thank you, Max. Um, I would just like to acknowledge at the beginning of the discussion on this, that of course, this part, um, which Max just described, which you've been in the process of attempting to renovate for, for some time, and received some philanthropic support for going out so early in the summer, later in the summer, this part, of course, was the site of, uh, I believe to be the site of this brutal, brutal murder of Kelly Cousin that took place there. And it just, um, uh, well, the, you know, city, all city teams were very effective and saddened uh, by this. Um, and um, uh, just want to acknowledge that as we talk about this part further, I think it is certainly, I don't think, I think if anything, the fact that that took place is a further reason for us to move forward with uh, with with this investment, um, I just think we should make that acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so, uh, with that, um, um, floor is open for discussion. That's uh, right. Thank you for that. Um, I just had a small technical question on the funding. The, um, the penny for parks restricted fund balance is that money that was allocated in a prior budget year? It was, it was like sort of earmarked for this project, and that's why it's restricted. Or is there another reason? Um, Cindy, actually, I think you could probably do a better job of speaking to that question than I could and that specific funding source. Yeah, so we have, with Penny for Parks, we've allocated out um, a certain amount of money that we're going to spend each year, and then we have about 30, I think there's like 39,000 or something that we had not allocated yet. So that so the sense was when we were looking for it, it's, we were working through with the clerk treasurer's office, the history of Penny for Parks, and it took them a while to work through what, how much we had in each of the accounts. So once we got to the resolving what that was, there's about 30 some thousand and change left in there after what we we're already planning to spend with current projects and the projects for FY24. And so that's what we're using a portion of that. When we realized that we needed, we were really going to value engineer things out of this project, which, you know, it feels like it's already a pretty tight project. Felt like that was for use to tap into those available funds to do it. Okay, I, just was, I was um, just uh, the idea of it restricted as being unassigned, you know, like oh, the yeah. distinction, just distinction so it's yeah. really like an unassigned, unassigned fund yeah. balance uh, yeah. for any kind of just I think the sense was restricted just in that it's restricted for I right. it's understood. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Further questions for this guy and or motion on the sale? I'm happy to make the motion as you can announce it. Thank you, Councilor Barlow has made the motion. Do we have a second? Second by Councilor McGee. Uh, discussion? Seeing none, we will go to a vote. Um, all those in favor of the vote, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, this brings us to item 4.3. It's not a good sign item, which is the Lakey Cemetery Exterior Restoration. And uh, Cindy, you want to take this off for us? Sure. You look very long, it's hard. So, um, at Lakeview Cemetery, there is a historic home on the site, which is currently being used for a lot of purposes to include um, city employee office, um, meeting area for the public to come in and do business as a cemetery. Um, and it also um, acts as a secondary building to the Louisa Howard Chapel, which is right next to it. Um, for backup, things like restrooms and meeting room and kitchen and things like that in there. So um, it's a building that is used quite a bit and has had um, deferred maintenance on it. So what we would like to do is do a little bit of restoration to the outside of the building so that structurally it stays sound and take care of roof leaks and water damage that are happening, take care of 
um, you know, the porch, which is failing, and just make sure that not only the building stays in as good shape as we can possibly make it, because we need to use it for a long time from now, um, but it's also safe for the public and for the employees that are in there. Um, the design work actually started uh, with Cindy before I was even part of the facilities team with her, so it's been going on for quite a while, and uh, something that we spend a lot of time planning for. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. The um, floor is open for questions, discussion, or motion. Happy to make a motion. I second. Okay, thank you, Councilor Barlow and Chang. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, Kim. Um, I, I think the whole board knows the key role that Kim plays in making sure that we take care of one of our city buildings. And uh, it's a great example of the work he's doing for us on that many fronts. Thank you. Um, 4.4, 4. Uh, this was referred to in the public forum, North Winooski Avenue Project and Community Health Center's parking. Um, Chapin, uh, well, uh, thank you. you could do, uh, I think it would be helpful if you both sort of uh, gave a quick summary of exactly the action here, but maybe give a little uh, broader context to agree you're comfortable sharing anything about the early weeks of uh, how we're going with uh, the, the changes on North uh, weeks. Yeah, I think uh, that might look at the appropriate to hear it. Great. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Katie Spencer, Director of Public Works. Um, we have been coordinating with the state of Vermont for a uh, repaving project of all class one town highways, which uh, the public largely understands as kind of state highways through the city of Burlington. Uh, which includes a section of North Winooski Avenue, which was repaved this year as part of that effort. Uh, we've been working with the community to uh, work on the implementation of the Winooski Avenue corridor study, which was a project underway from like, 2018 to 2020, uh, and then followed up with a parking management plan along North Winooski, uh, seeking to achieve the city's multimodal goals while limiting uh, impact on the public related to the uh, reduction in on-street parking. Uh, there's been a long uh, kind of concerted effort. Uh, we briefed the TUC frequently and the city council occasionally on the work there. And there's been a number of strategies put in place to uh, minimize the impact of uh, what recently was installing uh, bike lanes on a key two block section of North Winooski Avenue that allowed continuous bike lanes really from the Winooski Bridge uh, in the city of Winooski to uh, downtown Burlington. So uh, a number of initiatives have been uh, undertaken. Uh, there was a $15,000 grant program offered to businesses along the corridor. Uh, DPW worked with area businesses to try to open up uh, their off-street parking for more public parking. Uh, while uh, that was not as a, uh, impactful as, as I would have liked, we did get uh, one uh, uh, property owner of Vermont Legal Aid to uh, continue the use of their private parking uh, for public use after hours. Uh, and there were some modest efforts to secure additional off-street spaces for the Community Health Center. Uh, we reduced the parking fines for time-limited violations citywide uh, in response to concerns on this corridor. And we've been working with Community Health Center of Burlington to seek more off-street parking with them. As the memo lays out, they've spent around $13,000 with a design engineering firm to explore whether off-street parking could be developed on adjacent parcels next to theirs. Um, and uh, they have asked us, the city, whether we would uh, consider after we showed some options to them that we believe would be lower cost and lower impact, 
whether we would consider funding a, a portion of this next phase of design work that they will need to undertake. Uh, and they have asked the City Council's Transportation Energy Utilities Committee for a recommendation to the Council, uh, which the two provided at its August 22nd meeting. And uh, I think we have looked in good faith with the Community Health Center on other grant sources for such on-street parking. Uh, it is a challenge uh, to find federal sources for private off-street parking. Uh, to date, we haven't found any promising leads, but we'll continue to look. So if the City Council would consider this $15,000 contribution, I think it would be another good faith step in assisting a key uh, partner in the city on their uh, efforts to work with adjacent property owners on developing additional off-street parking. Happy to answer any questions. And before we go to questions, I just want to say uh, thank you, Chip, for the huge effort you put in to try to um, ensure that this uh, change is a successful one and the uh, countless hours that you spent with the health center and other stakeholders to uh, be as responsive as possible to uh, market concerns as we're making this really important. Um, Change to the active transportation elements. Thanks for your work. Um, with that, um, is there any, how do we like to proceed? Uh, questions, uh, comments, motion? Happy well. to make the motion. Thank you, Councilor Jang. Second by Councilor McGee. Discussion? I, I just want to also thank uh, Director Spencer for uh, for all the work he's done in the corridor. I know it's a really sort of challenging problem we have there. We also know that Community Health Center is um, puts major pressure on that first two blocks um, just beyond uh, Riverside Avenue. So if we could find off street parking, it would go a long way toward addressing some of the short term parking. Uh, needs of other organizations, residents, businesses, and so the two um, has, I, I, uh, like as was uh, said earlier, has been focused on this issue, um, and uh, and we're fully supportive of this. Sorry, I said you said this already, but the health center is that now working with uh, I think we're going to place a program with uh, the housing authority for um, five or six options uh, spaces, all right? Uh, yes, there were six spaces that the uh, BHA had offered for off street parking for staff of community health center. The last I understood from the health center is that they were finalizing those kind of agreement details to unlock those spaces. And my understanding is that that has been done, but I have not confirmed that. Okay, um, I think we have a motion on the side hand. Um, any further discussion? Seeing that we'll go to the vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Um, uh, that brings us to 4.5, which is another EPW item. Uh, welcome. Well, um, you have a long line of items from us this evening. Uh, great. Uh, we've always uh, been down in the point lines. Um, uh, next is the acceptance of VTrans Highway Class 2 Roadway Program Grant for North Avenue Road and Service Center. Um, so we hey, uh, Thank you for letting me share here, Board of Finance. Um, so, we are looking for uh, acceptance of the VTrans Town Highway Grant to conduct the paving project on North Avenue from Plattsburgh to Stanford. Um, so if you've driven down that stretch of road, it's in a pretty poor shape. Uh, it's delaminating in several locations. As an interim process, uh, as part of our enhanced patching uh, this year, we're going to do some patching in the southbound lane and starting to de delaminate there. Um, so we think that there's some imminent failure uh, given winter conditions coming up, but we're hoping that this will be part of the CY24 paving project. Um, and um, it's a $200,000 grant uh, that we'll be paying up front and seek reimbursement. Um, and then we've already budgeted 
uh, for the additional costs and the local match to uh, finish off the project. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Barlow. Do we have a second? Second by Councillor McGee. Um, further discussion. Okay, seeing none, we'll go to a vote. All those in favor of motion, please say aye. Aye. All right. Are there any opposed? Voting carries unanimously. Um, thank you. Uh, 4.6, budget amendment for 79 Pine Street, sales tax reallocation funds for PTC public improvements projects. <laughs> Welcome, Laura. Thank you for the thorough memo on this. Um, but uh, could we get off to just uh, quickly summarize this? Yep, so, certainly. This is going to be a, a two part city place kind of item tonight. Um, the first one is to basically amend the budget to accept grant funding in. Uh, it's a common theme for us tonight, which is a good problem to have. Um, and essentially, CEDO pursued this uh, in collaboration with the city and approval of the city council back in 2021. It's a sales tax reallocation for just large development projects to use a percent of their sales tax above and beyond a certain amount. So this is coming from the state of Vermont uh, as an opportunity to reinvest in public improvements in front of these development projects. So um, as we have just fairly recently started into the City Place project from previous council approvals back in the spring, uh, we are now looking to properly amend the budget so that we have a way to expend and then also receive these funds back um, from the state of Vermont. So that is the uh, summation of the sales tax reallocation item. It does go very closely with the next item as it relates to the acceptance of congressional directed spending um, for kind of the overall budget is what's gonna be called the BTC public improvements project. So this is one component of it, it's the public improvements that's being done by City Place Partners. Um, and then we'll speak to you about the other item, the next agenda. Okay. Um, Great. Um, questions, comments for the board? That's what we need. Uh, I'm happy to make the motion as recommended on civic clerk. Thank you. We have a second. A second by Councilor Jang. For the discussion, Councilor Barlow. I just, I had a question again. As I read the um, budget amendment request and the, the little block it talked about, um, you know, the sentence was stood out to me was for for the three hundred thousand dollars of the GO twenty three bond funds for the local match that have been approved under FY twenty four and originally allocated to the annual sidewalk contract for the bond. And that's the part that sort of stuck with me. So we're not we're so not the just next clear. agenda item, but yes. Okay, but we're not we're not not going to do sidewalk speed spray. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that was like, and I, I think I understood that from the rest of the item, but I wanted to be explicit yeah. in my question. For this one, and, the, and what basically we're adding a pure four hundred eighty thousand dollars to the project, and we didn't have to have a local match for this. Understood. Um, and then yes, I would be happy to answer your sidewalk question. Could you now or in the next? Sure. Day. Why don't you go ahead and answer it now? Just because yep. people are really understanding the picture. Um. So as we pursued the congressionally directed spending, there is one block of Cherry Street. We also have our the other project manager, Julia Ursaki, here with me, who was the primary crafter of the memo, but we can talk about the budget. There is one block that is not eligible for waterfront TIF as our point of match. And so we have to use other city funds to be able to accept the fullness of this $12 million grant. We have to come up with $3 million ourselves. The one block, one fifth of the three million six hundred thousand needs to come from something else. The sidewalks on Cherry Street are not in the best condition. They were already on our list of sidewalks that needed to be replaced. And so the value of the sidewalks to replace them on the whole of Cherry Street is six hundred thousand dollars. And so we are taking our geo bond money that was going to go towards replacing those sidewalks and using it and leveraging it as our local match to do more streetscape improvements. 
So it's slated as sidewalk money, but it's leveraging it to be more based on the fact that it already needed to be done. Thank you, that's, been, that's very helpful. I read the memo a couple of times and it still was like... No, it's, it not, it's not as clearly outlined as that. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think I think we've got a motion and a second already for the item that is before us, which is four point six. So any further discussion on four point six? Seeing that we'll go to a vote. All those in favor of that motion please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And now that brings us to a related item, which we've already talked a little bit about, the four point seven, the acceptance of Grant agreement for the congressionally directed spending for Church Street side, <clears throat> Cherry Street associated with BTC public improvements. Um, and, um, you know, we've had some little bit of public announcement discussing this already, but let me just reiterate to this theme uh, city stakes for the hard work to get into securing this. Pretty remarkable, uh, one of the largest. Uh, most of the time I've been in South Africa, I haven't had any congressional uh, directed spending, less than a penny, but uh, it's, uh, it is the largest, um, maybe nine or one of them. So uh, then we got some <clears throat> congrats and thanks to someone on that. And, and anything else we haven't said already? Or should we put it uh, happy to answer any questions, but just uh, do want to highlight that this is uh, part two and what will be part three is the upcoming acceptance uh, for the RAISE grant. We are working with Federal Highway on that agreement and anticipate that October, November timeframe to be able to bring in front of the city council, which will complete the picture of funding uh, for the entirety of Bank Street, Cherry Street, and the two new Pine and St. Paul Street. So, um, you know, there's still some um, city places, uh, ongoing projects. Um, there's still um, some two milestones and thresholds with the TIF. You can try to do a little bit like exactly how much TIF invests in. And maybe the council will remember we found this mechanism to uh, make, do some additional indebtedness, but the ultimate amount, well, ultimate size of the TIF is still to be determined based on the speed and the, um, of the private improvements. Um, that said, I think we have, with these two remarkable grants and the progress of the project today, we have a very good chance um, that we will be able to uh, complete um, at least the eight blocks that were initially talked about with voters back in 2016 um, New public infrastructure um, and a real possibility that we might actually be able to expand that to 10 blocks on the other way uh, to reduce the avenue. When you think about, you know, to kind of count up all the different blocks in our downtown, um, it, it's not that many blocks. 10, 10 blocks is a really substantial portion of downtown that's going to get rebuilt um, in a very profound way on this result of all these grants and all this work. So thanks again to the team. Um, with that, uh, the floor is open for promotion or discussion. Councilor McGee. Thank you, and thank you all for the work on this. Um, I only have one question. It's related to um, the city's paying for these uh, improvements, at least with this grant up front. $12 million up front seems like a lot. Um, so I'm just curious, you know, as we look at pretty tight, um, budget lines, uh, where that money's going to come from and how we're going to make that work. It's a pretty technical question. So, uh, if there's not an answer for it tonight, I'd be happy to discuss it over email. Uh, no, we're happy to answer that one. Um, uh, Councillor McGee, the... Department and also other departments that receive these grants to the state mostly have the opportunity to seek reimbursement on a monthly basis. So after we've incurred an expense, we're able to bill our funding source so that they get reimbursed. The city is really only out of the cash, usually about an average of about three months between the time that we pay the expense and seek our reimbursement and they pay us back. 
Uh, sometimes it's a little longer, sometimes it's a little less inside of DPW, uh, but we are able to, to turn that over. We also do work with the CT office as we hit construction to understand the cash flow that happens um, because that is pretty substantial. We've been working with the CT office closely on the Parkway project um, and would anticipate doing the same thing at school. This congressionally directed spending and the raise grant um, will be comparable to that project's finances. Great, thank you. Thank you uh, for that explanation, Laura. And, and you know, something um, that we have available to us, uh, it sometimes it's prudent to do is, you know, if, if we think cash flow is going to be an issue, which it is not, but if it is, you can place a grant anticipation note, which um, is designed for the state. that we know the money is coming from the federal government, um, but need it sooner. Um, Times have uh, been placed that type of instrument, but I'm not sure if that'll be necessary or not. Uh, further discussion questions, motion on this item. Happy to make the Happy to make the motion. Okay, thank you, Councillor Jang. Seconded by Councillor Barlow. Further discussion? Seeing none, we'll go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And this brings us to the final item of the night, 4.8, authorization to amend project budget and execute a construction contract for the East Avenue traffic calming. Another DPW item. I don't know if Councilor, Councilor Butcher still, uh, former Councilor Butcher still wants to be interested in the East Avenue improvements. I think it's going to be a nice number of involved. Is that right? Yeah. Not surprised. Um, these are some nice, uh, nice improvements. You want to tee it up a little bit? Yes, absolutely. So um, this traffic calming request came from the neighborhood a couple years ago. We put this project through our traffic calming program. Um, so we did data collection. Um, that's means we're above the 25 miles per hour that it's posted at. Um, so we developed this project to install two raised crosswalks and three of these median chicanes to reduce the street that we've got. I must say I had to go Google chicanes when uh, this came, came through. I know this right this little bit, but uh, this is a turn to go back to the 1600s, I believe. Wow. Um, so it's basically a jog in the road. Um, so it's like this horizontal displacement where you have to slow down to kind of maneuver it. Um, it's a median chicane because of the bike lane. Um, so we're keeping the bike lane on the west side, but it kind of acts as the two, um, two sides of the chicane that help jog people around. Um, Thank you. Yep. Um, questions? Councilor Barbara. Thank you. I'm just, I'm interested in the different uh, traffic calming features we use throughout the city. Like the one that I'm, I'm, I'm still like sort of wondering about is the one we put on uh, North Avenue by Asco, and whether or not that actually slows anybody, depending on what kind of car you're driving, driving over that with fairly high rate of speed. But the chicane is something that's new. We haven't tried that in other areas of the city, have we? So we have a parking chicane on Bright Street where um, we just basically created that jog by flipping the parking um, from the other, to the other side of the street in the middle. Um, and we just completed our post evaluation of that project and found like a mile per hour speed reduction from like 26 to 20. Like that. Um, so a little bit different in that the parked cars create the shipping, not a curb median, but it's a much lower volume street. Right. Um, I think we also have one on Brooks Ave, a chicane, yeah. uh, but that was well before my time went to get you. And the, the piece I'd add is that we have a number of tools in our toolbox and each street is different. And the challenge of this street was that given a number of attributes along this street, it really didn't fit some of the other uh, methodologies. So given its proximity in a 
predominant emergency response route to the hospital, uh, given the average traffic on the route, given you know the change of use along the corridor being predominantly residential to having some commercial, it really took us a number of times. And this was the tool in the toolbox at the end where we actually only had one alternative that we were showing the neighborhood, uh, which led to some, some good, robust community conversation around whether it was the right uh, alternative. And I think in the end, with some modifications, adjusting in scope, uh, it's got robust community support. Now. Great. Thank you for that. Deconstruction and appreciate the recent explanation of using different different tools for the, the different applications. Um, uh, certainly in many places, not, I, I want to maybe consider the case of the narrowing of uh, the roadway area and intersections and then it has a major impact on the driver speeds. Okay, uh, questions or information? We have much to get. I'm happy to make the motion as recommended on the clerk. Great. Thank you, Councilor McGee. Second by Councilor Jang. Discussion. Seeing none, we'll go to a vote. All those in favor of motion, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. And we are, um, if there is no objection, given that we have completed the work of the board for tonight, we will adjourn at exactly this spot on the dot. How about that?